I said I was going to get you away from it all, the road noise, the tons of fishermen, and that's exactly where we're at. We're in the same stream, but now we're up towards the headwaters of the Esopus. This is truly wild around me. There's no beer cans, there's no cigarette packs, and empty bags of wise potato chips or whatever. This is pure nature. It's beautiful here. The birds, the vegetation around us, the animals, and a gorgeous trout stream. Now, a couple of things you have to take into account when you come up to fish a stretch like this. Sure, the stream is smaller, and therefore there's going to be fewer trout. But you also have to realize that there's also going to be fewer fishermen. Basically, when you come up to fish a stretch like this, you're going to have the stream to yourself. And for those of us that are serious about our fishing and about nature, that's the way we like it. A stream such as this, such as this, the headwaters of the Esopus, does have trout. And in fact, in this stretch, there's a combination of brown and native brook trout. And there's something very special about being able to catch native brook trout, especially since their range has shrunk so significantly in recent years. There are also some misconceptions. First, don't assume because this stream is small that there's no large trout present. As a matter of fact, in a hole just downstream from me, there are some brown trout that range from 16 to 18 inches in length. And those are big trout. Sure, there are fewer big trout, but as I said, it's a trade-off. This is nature and no fishermen except you. Let's talk a little bit about the physical characteristics of the stream. What do you look for to judge whether you want to spend your time fishing here, your quotes quality time outdoors? Well, the first thing is look at the stream bank. Is the stream within its bank or is it very high water? If it's basically flooded, forget it. You can sit here and enjoy nature, but you don't have to worry about fishing because the trout are stressed during flood or high water conditions. They're trying to maintain their positions in holes or in runs, and they're not going to be feeding very much. Second thing you want to look for is the color of water because the color of water is going to largely determine what kind of approach you use in terms of bait or lures or whatever. If the stream is clear, you might want to fish with artificial. Lures, flies, I'm not a purist, some people are. I use what's best for the conditions. If the water is colored so that visibility is low, you might want the trout to react not only to sight feeding but also olfaction or smell. Because in highly colored water, they're not going to see that well. So in that particular case, you're probably better off using bait, maybe even worms. I know for fly fishermen, this is heresy, but if you want to catch trout, use what works and catch trout. They're awfully good eating. Now, other physical characteristics, well, in a habitat such as this, you know it's going to be well oxygenated. That's not going to be a major problem because you have cold water, which holds more oxygen. You have a lot of turbidity excuse me, not turbidity, turbulence, a lot of interaction between the water and air, so you know it's going to be well oxygenated. Also in this kind of habitat, there's not a lot of organic matter, meaning not a lot of decomposition or loss of oxygen uh, by breakdown of organic matter by aerobic bacteria. So it's a good habitat in that regard. Another thing you want to be concerned about when you're looking at this trout stream is does there appear to be good primary production? That is, is there good plant growth? Because you need a certain amount of organic matter for the organisms to feed on. The mayfly, stones, and caduces, which of course form the basis of the food for our trout. While in the stream we're at, there's very good algae growth. You can see it on the rocks. And also, something you ought to remember, if you walk into a trout stream and you can stand on the rocks with no slippage, in other words, you can remain erect, not fall in the water, this probably would suggest that there's very little production. What makes rocks slippery are a type of primary production called the diatoms. We've mentioned them previously. A good trout stream, a productive trout stream, is a stream 
where you can practically fall down with every step. In other words, the rocks are so slippery, it's hard to maintain your balance. In a stream such as this, another thing you'll want to check on is the invertebrate population. Now, it's relatively easy to do. Basically, all you need to do is come up and turn over a few rocks and look at the bottom of the rocks and see what kind of invertebrates are present. If you turn up a number of rocks, and I don't pick rocks on the bank or rocks that are just partially in water, you want to pick up rocks that are in the main flow. If you turn those rocks over and there's relatively few invertebrates, especially as I mentioned the big three, maystones and cadises, then there's probably some problem with production in that habitat. However, if you find them and you find them in relative abundance, there's a very good chance that there'll also be a relatively substantial trout population as well. Well, when you've talked about the physical characteristics and they seem suitable, and you've worked with the lower levels of the food chain, the primary production, the primary consumers or the invertebrates, and they seem suitable, then it's time to start thinking about trout fishing because you're ready to go. Oh, one thing I almost forgot to mention, and I don't want to, to pass it up. You should always take the temperature of the water. That may seem relatively insignificant, but it's not. Remember that these organisms, that these trout, are poikilothermic or cold-blooded. And their activity patterns are definitely affected by water temperature. If the water is very cold, they are going to be very inactive. And you're almost going to have to force feed them to get them to bite or to strike a lure. Best temperatures i found are somewhere roughly about 45 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. In that range, trout are fairly active. My preference, right around 50 to 55. Now, let's get back to the trout. You can look at a stream, and once you're used to working with it, you can almost tell exactly where the trout are going to be. Look for either holes, that is, deeper water areas especially if cover is provided. That is logs or brush piles or undercut banks because trout are very cover oriented. You may also find them in deep runs. That is where water is faster moving, but there is depth, which also depth provides cover as well. The open riffle areas, they may be small trout in, but basically you're wasting your time. Always fish upstream because trout are facing upstream. That's where their food comes from. And trout, especially in clear water such as today, are very, very aware of individuals around them. So that if you fish upstream, you're not going to spook the fish as you're approaching a hole or a run, pool or a run, that you want to fish in. What to fish with? Well, basically, that's your preference. One of the things you ought to do, though, is look for what's happening on the stream. If there's a hatch, if there are maize or stones coming off as adults, you might want to fish with dry flies. It's a lot of fun, and that'll provide you with a lot of action. If there's not much of a hatch, the water is clear, you're probably just as well off fishing with spinners. I prefer a small CP swing, but Panther Martin, Meps, all of them work very well. The main thing is enjoy your trip. Enjoy nature. Get away from the crowd. And even if you don't catch any fish, or very few, you're still going to have a great time.